What you are about to see is a story written by ChetGPT, but animated separately by me using art from the Crayon's originality. So come with me and you will see everything multiversually. Bang bang. Chapter 1. The Unexpected Arrival. Spider-Man swung through the bustling streets of New York City, relishing in the freedom of his powers as he soared through the air. Suddenly, he was yanked from the sky by a strange force, hurtling him into a swirling vortex of colours and light. As he tumbled through the vortex, Spider-Man caught a glimpse of SpongeBob SquarePants, Sheldon Cooper, and John Oliver all being pulled into the vortex with him. They all seemed as confused and disoriented as he was. Finally, the vortex spat them out into the ground in a strange, unfamiliar world. The sky was a sickly shade of green, and the buildings were twisted and grotesque. Spider-Man had no idea where he was, but he knew that this wasn't New York City. As he struggled to stand up, he heard a cackle behind him. Turning around, he saw a green-skinned alien with bulging eyes and a menacing grin. Welcome to the world of Invader Zim! The alien said, his voice dripping with malice. I have brought you here to participate in a multiverse themed adventure and you won't be leaving until the adventure is complete. Spider-Man didn't know what to make of the strange alien but he knew one thing for sure he wasn't gonna let himself or his new friends become pawns in this alien's twisted game. He looked to Spongebob, Sheldon and John who all seemed just as determined as he was. Together, they would find a way out of the strange world and back to their own realities. But first, they would have to survive whatever dangers lie ahead. Chapter 2 The Hunt Spider-Man and his newfound allies surveyed their surroundings, trying to get their bearings in this strange world. The green-skinned alien who had brought them here was nowhere to be seen, but the four of them knew that they couldn't let their guard down. As they began to explore, they quickly realized the world of Invader Zim was full of strange creatures and otherworldly technology. They encountered robotic dogs with laser eyes, flying saucers that zipped through the sky, and even giant blobs of goo that oozed through the streets. It was all very overwhelming. But the team of Spider-Man, Spongebob, Sheldon and John were determined to find a way out of this place. They had to work together and use all of their unique skills and knowledge to survive and make their way through this strange new world. Spongebob proved to be particularly useful as his cheerful demeanor and cartoonish abilities seemed to delight the strange creatures they encountered. Sheldon, with his vast knowledge of science and engineering, was able to decipher some of the strange technology they came across. Well, John's wit and humor helped keep everyone's spirits up in the face of danger. As they journeyed deeper into the world of Invader Zim, they began to notice strange portals appearing at random intervals. Each one seemed to lead to a different reality, a different world entirely. The team realized that they had stumbled into a multiverse hunt, with the green-skinned alien using them as pawns to gather resources and artifacts from different realities. But Spider-Man and his allies weren't going to let themselves be used in this way. They made a plan to take the fight to the alien and put an end to his twisted game once and for all. With newfound determination, the team set out towards the alien's lair, ready to take on whatever challenges lie ahead. They may have been from different worlds, but together they would overcome anything that stood in their way. Chapter 3 A Strange New World As the group of unlikely allies continued their journey through the strange world of Invader Zim, they stumbled upon a mysterious portal. Without hesitation, Spider-Man led the way and they all jumped through the portal, unsure of where they would end up. When they emerged on the other side, they found themselves in the vibrant and colorful world of Springfield. SpongeBob's eyes widened as he took in the sight of the Simpson family home, while Sheldon immediately began analyzing the physics of the world. John Oliver, always a skeptic, looked around with a sense of bewilderment. 
What is this place? He asked. Looks like a cartoon. It is a cartoon, John. Sheldon said with a condescending tone. It's the world of the Simpsons. SpongeBob couldn't contain his excitement. I've always wanted to meet Homer and Marge Simpson. He exclaimed. Spider-Man took charge once again. We don't have time for sightseeing, he said. We need to figure out how to get back to our own worlds. As they walked through the bustling streets of Springfield, they noticed that something was off. The citizens of Springfield seemed to be acting strangely, almost like they were being controlled. They soon discovered that an alien force was behind the strange behavior. The group realized that this was the work of the same invader Zim who had brought them all together in the first place. We need to stop Zim and put an end to his plans, Spider-Man said, determination in his voice. As they made their way to Zim's lair, they were met with resistance from his robotic minions. But with their combined skills and abilities, the group was able to fight off the machines and make their way to Zim's inner sanctum. Zim himself was waiting for them, a wicked grin on his face. Ah, the heroes have arrived, he exclaimed. But it's too late to stop me now. With a wave of his hand, Zim activated a massive machine, causing the very fabric of reality to start to tear apart. The group realized that if they didn't act fast, they would be trapped in this world forever. Well, that's not good, John said as the machine started to overload. SpongeBob had an idea. I think I can use my ability to make bubbles to patch up the holes in reality, he exclaimed. With SpongeBob's help, the group was able to prevent the multiverse from collapsing in on itself. As they all said their goodbyes and returned to their respective worlds, they knew that they had formed an unbreakable bond during their adventure. But little did they know that this was only the beginning of their multiverse adventures. <laughs> Chapter 4 A Mountain Town In Mr. Garrison's classroom at South Park Elementary School, the kids are all sitting at their desks, listening attentively to Mr. Garrison as he stands at the front of the room. All right, class. Today we're going to learn about the differences between internet cookies and edible cookies. Wait, so internet cookies aren't something you can eat? That's right, Kyle. Internet cookies are actually small files that websites store on your computer to remember your preferences and personalize your browsing experience. But edible cookies are delicious. They're like little bits of honey. Yes, Cartman. Edible cookies are baked goods that are meant to be consumed as a tree. Suddenly, the door to the classroom bursts open and Cookie Monster from Sesame Street enters, growling fiercely. Oh, cookie, Cookie, give me Cookie. The kids all scream and Mr. Garrison tries to calm Cookie Monster down. Wait a minute, Cookie Monster. We don't have any cookies here. You talking about cookies? We're, we're cookies. I was just explaining the differences between internet cookies and edible cookies. No care. Want the cookie now? Cookie Monster lunges at Mr. Garrison, knocking him to the ground. The kids all scatter and run out of the classroom in fear. Help, someone help me. Just then, Chef bursts into the room and grabs Cookie Monster by the arms, pulling him away from Mr. Garrison. Easy there, Cookie Monster. What's got you so worked up? Cookie. Want the cookie? I think I can help with that. Come on, let's go get some cookies from the cafeteria. Yeah, cookies. Cookie yeah. Monster cheers cookie, and cookie. follows Chef out of the classroom, leaving Mr. Garrison laying on the floor, shaken and confused. Well, that was certainly unexpected. I think I need a vacation. Chapter 5. A Rock in a Hard Place. In the world of Pokemon, where the rock-type gym leader Brock is preparing for a battle with a trainer in his gym, suddenly a bright light engulfs him and he's sucked into a portal, disappearing from sight. When Brock regains consciousness, he finds himself in a strange world of portals. He looks around, bewildered, and sees a large blue monster running between portals. What in the world is going on here? As he watches the monster disappear into another portal, Brock's curiosity curiosity gets the better of him, and he decides to explore the portals himself. He enters one and finds himself in a world he's never seen before. A world from the popular animated series, DuckTales. Wow, what kind of Pokemon is this place hiding? He walks around the new world, taking in all the sights and sounds, when he suddenly spots two figures approaching him. Scrooge McDuck and Darkwing Duck. Whoa, these must be some rare Pokemon. What are you talking about, laddie? We're not Pokemon. Honestly, 
Not everyone is a Pokemon, you know. But, but I don't understand. You look like they could be rare Pokemon that I've never seen before. Rare Pokemon, you see? Well, I'm afraid we're not Pokemon, but I do like the sound of that. Yeah, maybe we should start charging people for a glimpse of that. Like they do with those legendary Pokemon. I don't understand. If you're not rare Pokemon, then what are you? I'm Scrooge McDuck. The richest duck in the world. And this is my colleague, Darkwing Duck. And we're not for catching, got it? Rocknod's still feeling a little foolish for mistaking them for rare Pokemon. As he prepares to leave the world of DuckTales, he can't help but wonder what other worlds he might discover through the portals. Maybe one of these portals will take me to the world of the legendary Mewtwo. I can't wait to find out. Brock enters another portal, disappearing into the unknown, eager to continue his adventure. Chapter 6. The Courage Within. Brock, Scrooge and Darkwing arrive back in Portal World. As they look around, they see Cookie Monster engaged in a fist fight with Kirby, who appears to be a cookie. What is going on here? Plus me back by that beast is called Kirby. But why is he a cookie? Looks like he's finally found a way to get his hands on all the cookies he's been craving. I he certainly seems to be enjoying himself. The fight between Cookie Monster and Kirby intensifies, with each landing blows on each other. However, as Kirby starts to gain the upper hand, he suddenly opens his mouth wide and devours Cookie Monster whole. Did Kirby just eat Cookie Monster? I guess he really was hungry. As Kirby finishes devouring Cookie Monster, he suddenly transforms from his cookie form into his blue fuzzy puppet form, much to the surprise of Brock, Scrooge and Darkwing. Did you see that? Kirby transformed! I it seems he can change his form at will. Well, that's one way to get rid of your enemies. As they watch Kirby go on his way, Brock, Scrooge and Darkwing continue to explore the strange world of portals, never quite sure what they will encounter next. Brock steps through another portal, eager to see what world he will discover. This time they find themselves in a world that is strange and unsettling, filled with bizarre creatures and eerie landscapes. As Brock takes a few steps forward, he realizes that he has entered the world from Courage, the cowardly dog. This place gives me the creeps. What kind of Pokemon could be lurking here? Suddenly, he hears a voice behind him. Hey you, what are you doing here? Brock turns around and sees a grumpy looking old man with a bald head and a long beard. Oh, I'm just passing through. I didn't mean to intrude. Well, you better get out of here before the monsters get you. Monsters? What kind of monsters? Hey, Take a look for yourself. Brock looks in the direction that Eustace is pointing and sees a group of grotesque monsters headed their way. Those aren't Pokemon! Eh, those they are nuts. Why can anybody think everything is a Pokemon? Don't mind him. He's just grumpy because he hasn't caught a Pikachu in years. Hi, I can sympathize with the poor chap. Sorry about that. I'm still learning about all the different worlds out there. Just get out of here before those monsters get you and don't come back. Brock, Scrooge and Darkwing quickly turn and head back towards the portal they came from, relieved to be leaving the creepy world behind. I guess not every world is filled with friendly Pokemon. I'll have to be more careful from now on. As they step back through the portal and return to the world of portals, Brock looks back at the strange and unsettling world, wondering what other surprises the portals might have in store for him. To be continued.